Good evening, kids. So, are you ready for today's story? Today's story is based on one of the biblical group of books called the Book of Jonah. This group of biblical books is called the Twelve Minor Prophets. Long, long ago, there lived a man called Jonah in Israel. He was the son of Amittai, and he lived during the reign of Jeroboam II. Jonah preached to his people about God's love, and like God, Jonah tried to love all people and creatures God had created. Oh, hello there. Hmm, it's been a good day. Hello, are you hungry, my friend? Hmm. All right. I've got plenty of peanuts with me. Come on, you can have this. Don't worry. Go on. You can eat that. <laughs> have a good day, my friend. Huh? What is that noise? Sounds like someone is fighting. It's my robe. No, it's mine. Get away from me. This man is a cheater. He is lying. Huh? Stop. Go away, you. Stop it. Fighting wouldn't solve your problem. I saw this first. No, I did. Come on, you two. God doesn't like people who fight. It upsets him. Ah! Ah! You see, now neither one of you gets the robe. You are behaving like someone from the city of Nanoa. Huh? No, don't say that. We are not like the Nanoites. Yes, Jonah, the Nanoites are enemies of our people. Please don't compare us to them. I heard they stole the goods from one of our traders yesterday. They are the thieves. And the young ones there doesn't respect the elders. They are so cruel. Yes, they are very bad people. Do you want God to think that we are like them? No! no. We are sorry, Jonah. We will start behaving like Israelites from now on. Good. Then you mustn't fight anymore. Jonah kept teaching the people about God's laws to the Israelites. That night, Jonah, as usual, was strolling outside his house after his dinner. That was when God spoke to him and gave him a very huge task to do. Jonah! Huh? Who was it? Jonah! God, it's you! Jonah, I have an important job for you. What is it, my lord? I will do anything for you. The people of Nineveh are not obeying my laws, Jonah. They steal from each other. The children are not respecting their elders. And men are lazy there. Even the king is corrupt, and he is not taking care of the problems. Yes, my lord. The Nanowites are bad people. They are bad because they don't know about me. No one has taught them my laws. Jonah, get up and go to this great city. Tell them I am about to destroy their city in 40 days because of their wickedness. Me? I... I can't go to Nineveh. Please, please give me some other job. No. You must do what I ask you. But... But they are the enemies of my friends and neighbors. They are the enemy of my city. You must go, Jonah. In 40 days, I am going to punish.
punish them. God, God, I don't understand. God is going to punish the Nanowites, but... But what if we tell them about God and they change their ways? No, I can't let that happen. They are my enemies. Jonah got very confused. He called his friends home and seeked their advice. Hmm, your fear is right, Jonah. I think you shouldn't go there at all. Yes, how can I preach to our enemies? No, you can't. Don't tell them about God. But won't I be offending God if I don't preach to them? Hmm, I think I have an idea. I'm going to hide from God. Ha <laughs> ha, you're joking now. Where can you hide from God? Hmm, I don't think I can hide from God by staying in Israel. I have to get out of here. So, where are you planning to go? I... I will go as far from Nineveh as I can. I will go in the opposite direction so that God won't find me. You can go to Tarshish. It's pretty far from Nineveh. Yes, God will never find you there. Hmm. I think it's a good idea. I will go to Tarshish and God will never find me there. So Jonah started his journey towards Tarshish. He traveled through the desert for many days trying to run away from God. And after traveling for many days, he finally arrived at the harbor of Jaffa. Hmm. I've lost the person standing there. Excuse me? Yes. What do you want? Hello. Can you tell me where the ship is going? We are going to Tarshish to buy gold and silver. Why do you ask? Hmm. Can you please take me with you? I too am going there on urgent business. Of course you can, but you will have to pay us once we reach there. Sure, Captain. Thank you so much. Hey, but listen, let me tell you this beforehand. The journey through the sea might get rough. You must. No problem, Captain. I will manage it. So Jonah climbed aboard and they started traveling towards Tarshish. They traveled for many days in the sea. The captain and other crew in the ship did not worship the God of Israel, and instead they were worshiping idols made of stone. After traveling for some time, the captain saw a terrible storm coming. Men, watch out! There's a storm coming! Huh? Oh no! I've never seen something like that before! The storm grew stronger, and their ship was in a lot of trouble. The ship is going to sink! Throw the cargo into the sea! Yes, Captain. Captain, we have thrown away everything that we could find. But there's no use. The ship is sinking. Pray to the gods! One of you pray to the wind god! You, you pray to the god of the seas, and I will pray to the sun god. The men started praying for many gods seeking help, but it was of no use. The storm got worse and worse. Captain, Captain! What is it? I found him sleeping in the room below. He was snoring like nothing was going on. Huh? How dare you? Don't you want to be saved? Pray to the God of Sea for saving us. I... I don't think praying to the God of Sea is going to help you. Huh? What's going on? Hmm... Somebody has brought bad luck to our voyage. Very bad luck. That's right. This is all happening because of bad luck. We have to find out who it is, else we are going to die today. Let's draw lot and see who brought us bad luck. Yes, come here everyone! The captain and his crew were very superstitious and they decided to cast lots and find out who brought them bad luck. 
It's you. You are the one who brought us bad luck. Me? Uh, uh. Tell us the truth. Who are you? Where do you come from? And why did you get on this ship? Hmm. All right. I will tell you the truth. My name is Jonah, and I'm a prophet from Israel. Huh? A prophet? Why are you here on the ship? I... I worship the God of Heaven, and I'm running away from Him. Running away? So this is happening all because of you? Jonah, tell us what should we do now? Yes. How do we make the storm go away? You... You have to throw me overboard. It's because of me that God has sent the storm. Huh? Throw you into the sea? We can't just throw someone into the deep sea. Come on everyone! Find all the remaining cargo and throw into the sea! No. No. It's not going to help. You must throw me into the sea. Captain, Jonah must be telling the truth. There's no other way. No, I... I can't do that. Look, Captain, can't you see that his god is more powerful than any of our god? Jonah, I am sorry. We tried everything to save the ship. We now have to throw you out of the ship. I know, Captain. It's me who made God angry. And I deserve to be punished. God of Israelites, we are sorry for throwing Jonah into the sea. Please forgive us. We are sorry, Jonah! As soon as they threw Jonah into the sea, the storm disappeared and the water became calm again. Huh? <laughs> now I don't have to go to Nineveh. Huh? <sighs> What's that? Is that... is that a whale? Suddenly, a huge whale came from nowhere and swallowed Jonah. Oh! When Jonah opened his eyes after some time, he found himself inside the whale's belly. Huh? Where am I? Huh? Oh, it's stinking. Am I... am I inside the whale's belly? When Jonah realized that he was inside the whale's belly, he understood his mistake and he prayed to God. God, I'm so sorry. I was a fool trying to run away from you. Please forgive me, God. Jonah prayed for three days and three nights inside the whale's belly. And on the third day, the whale vomited Jonah onto the shore of Nineveh. Thank you, God, for saving me. Jonah, now go to the city and give them my message. Yes, God, I'm ready for it now. So Jonah went to Nineveh and started speaking about God. All the people of Nineveh listened to him and they started to change themselves. People of Nineveh, you must leave your wicked ways and obey God's laws. God is going to destroy your city in 40 days if you don't repent. Huh? What he says must be the truth. Yes, we must repent for all our wrongdoings. I must inform this to the king. My lord, a prophet has come from Israel. And he's warning our people that our city is going to be destroyed. Hmm. A prophet? If it's a prophet, then he must be saying the truth. We have sinned gravely. We must do as what he says. We must repent for our sins. We will all fast, starting tomorrow, for penance. Everyone should cover their body with ashes and wear only rags. Let us pray for his mercy. We must show Israel's God 
that we are sorry for acting so badly. Send out these orders immediately. Yes, my lord. After Jana told the Neavites about God and his laws, the people changed and they started repenting for their sins. Jana then left the city. He then walked to a nearby hill overlooking the city and sat there to watch God punish them. He waited and waited and waited, but nothing happened to the city. I knew it. God is not going to punish them because they repented. Lord, why did you make a fool out of me? You dragged me over and force me to speak. But now, now what I told them is never going to happen. Huh. Jonah realized that God will not destroy the city because the Ninevites had repented. He turned back and walked into the desert. Jonah walked for many days without food and water. He was really tired. Huh. Huh. I'm so tired and hungry. Oh, thank you, God. Thank you for this plan and saving me. But the next morning, when Jonah woke up, he found the plant dead. Huh? What? A worm had attacked the plant and because of him, the plant had died. You! It's because of you that the plant died. I'm going to kill you now. Jonah. God. Jonah, why are you angry? This worm, it killed the plant which gave me shelter. You are mad because the plant is dead. You are caring about this small plant, but the whole city of Nineveh doesn't concern you. What did you do to keep it alive? So? What do you think? If I punished all the men, women, and children in Nineveh, I made them and cared for them for many years. They never knew about me or loved me until you came. Ah. Now tell me, shouldn't I still care about them? Yes. Yes, you should. Now, go home. Tell your people about Ninove and the plant. Spread my message to everyone. Jonah understood God's message. He returned to Israel and started spreading the message of God's love to everyone. Ha 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 ha! That was a great story, Father. And it was very funny too. I'm glad you liked it. Are you ready for the questions? Yes, Father. All right, now tell me, where did God ask Jonah to go and preach? To Nanoa. That's correct, Matthew. Why did Jonah obey God and run away? Nanoites were the enemies of Israel. Jonah was afraid that he would be helping Nanoites by telling them God's message. He wanted them to get punished. So he ran away so that he won't have to preach to them. Very good, Lucy. Where was Jonah trying to go? He was trying to go to Tarshish. And did he reach there? No. When Jonah was traveling in a ship, God sent a storm and the sailors were forced to throw Jonah into the sea. Good. What happened to Jonah while he was in the sea? A huge whale came and swallowed Jonah. Did he die then? No, he stayed alive inside the whale's belly for three days. Good, Matthew. All right, now tell me what was the message that God wanted Jonah to deliver to the Nanoites? God wanted Jonah to warn them that the city of Nineveh was going to be destroyed in 40 days because of the sins they had committed. And did he destroy the city? No. When the people of Nineveh heard Joshua's message, they repented and mourned for their sins. 
God was kind to them and he did not destroy the city as he had warned. Ha <laughs> ha, that's correct Lucy. Hmm, it's getting late. We have to leave now. Father, are you going to tell us the story of another prophet tomorrow? No, tomorrow I will tell you the story of Job, who was a rich man in Israel and who was also a faithful servant of God. I will see you tomorrow then. Goodbye kids. Goodbye, Goodbye father. Hello Matthew. Good morning, father. Why are you sitting here alone? Where is Lucy and George? Lucy is there. And George is over there. What happened? Why aren't you guys playing together? Lucy and George had a fight and they are not talking to each other. <laughs> is that so? And why did they fight with each other? Mm, we were playing hide and seek and Lucy is saying that George cheated. <laughs> mm, now go and tell them that I want to talk to them. I will tell them, father. Lucy, Lucy. Lucy. Go away, Matthew. I don't want to talk to anybody. Lucy, Father John is here and he is calling you. I'm coming. All right, you go ahead. I have to call George also. George, George, Father John is calling you. Huh? Let's go then. Hey there, good morning. Why are you silent? Aren't you going to wish me back? Good morning, Father. Matthew told me that you both had a fight. Is that right? Yes, Father. This George, he... No, don't tell me the reason, Lucy. She's lying, Father. It was she. Stop it, George. Now listen. Whatever the reasons might be, I want you both to forgive each other and say that you were sorry. But father... Lucy... I'm sorry, George. I shouldn't have fought with you. I'm sorry too. You're my best friend, Lucy. And I'll never repeat this. <laughs> See? Wasn't that easy? Thank you, father. Hmm. Now come on. Let's sit here. Today... I'm going to tell you the story of Ruth, a Moabite woman. She was an excellent example of how one should trust God. Her selfless love and total dedication to her mother-in-law is depicted as an example for all generations. Wow! Tell us a story, Father. All right. Now listen carefully. Long time back, in a place called Moab, there lived a woman named Naomi. Her husband had died a long time back and now recently her two sons too died. She was now left with the wives of her sons, Orpha and Ruth. There's no point of sitting here and crying. We can do nothing about it now. Ruth, you must listen to what I'm going to tell you. What is it, mother? My daughters, you're still young. Go back to your people and marry again. You can have children of your own one day. Mother, what are you saying? No, Ruth. Stop. You must do what I say. I'm going back to Bethlehem and you can't come with me. But... Why can't I come to Bethlehem with you? 
because you're a Moabite woman and in Israel you'll always be a foreigner my dear Orpha will you at least listen to me I will do whatever you wish me to do Thank you dear thank you so much Now Ruth please Mother please don't insist wherever you go I will go wherever you die I will die your people shall be my people and your god will be my god oh dear Ruth refused to part her mother and they both traveled together to Bethlehem. Do you see that mountain Ruth? That one? Yes, that's Nebo. It was from there that Moses viewed Canaan. Nebo? Hmm. Poor Moses. Why did you say that, mother? Oh, that. That's because after leading all the Israelites from Egypt, he died there. He died at the threshold of the promised land. The God of Israel is a God of the poor. He will not abandon me. While they were traveling, Naomi narrated the history of Israel to Ruth. And after many days of traveling, they finally reached Naomi's house in Bethlehem. Hey, look. Who are they? Hmm. I think I've seen that face before. Hmm, isn't that Naomi? Yes, it's her. Come on. Naomi! Naomi, it's you. Naomi. You look so different. Yes, it's been so long since you left. Where is Elimelak and your sons? What happened now, me? No. Don't call me that anymore. Don't call me now, me. My life has become like this ruined house. I had everything when I left here, but I have come back empty-handed. I'm no more now, me, the happy one. I'll be called Mara, the sorrowful from now on. Don't worry, now, me. It will be all right. But the God hasn't abandoned me totally. He has left me with her, the wife of my son. She is a good woman. May God bless you. For many days, their neighbors helped them by giving food to eat. Mother, <laughs> Ruth, what is it? How long are we going to live on this charity? Yes. Our neighbors are kind, but we mustn't burden them. Mother, I was thinking. What, dear? I was thinking that I can go and work somewhere. What? Yes, mother. Look, I'm healthy and I can work. But, dear, I can't bear that. Listen to me, mother. This is harvest season. and i can go into the fields and glean no i can't bear to see my daughter glean in a stranger's land but why should we be ashamed you have told me that our god is the god of poor that's right but they might insult you calling you a foreigner mother don't worry i shall return by evening 
God, Father of orphans and protector of widows, please watch over my daughter. And that day, Ruth went to work in the fields. She started collecting the leftover ears of corn. It is scorching and I am thirsty. Where can I get some water? The field that Ruth chose to work that day was owned by Boaz, a relative of Naomi. On that day, Boaz came to the field to oversee the reaping. Who is that young woman? Oh, her. Do you remember your aunt, Naomi? Naomi? Wife of Elimelech. Yes. That young woman is the daughter-in-law of Naomi. She has me permission to glean in your field and I allowed. Hmm, they are poor widows. She hasn't taken any break all day. Hmm, I remember Naomi. She was a good woman and she was tried very hard. What's your name? Ah, uh, me? Yes, you come here. Yes, master. What's your name? My name is Ruth. I am wife of Naomi's son. I know, I am a relative of Naomi. Oh. You don't have to go anywhere else for gleaning. No one will bother you here. You may drink water from my servant's drawer. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. But what have I done to deserve this? You? You left everything and came here with your mother-in-law? Come with me. We'll have something to eat. this hmm this is such delicious bread thank you I'm glad you like it can I take this bread to my mother she will like this very much of course you can thank you Boaz liked Ruth very much and he decided to help her of corn from the bundle and let them fall down. Let Ruth collect those. You have a good heart, Master. Lord God, protector of the weak, wonderful are your ways. Ruth, how was your day? And, and how did you get so much grain? Ah, uh, Mother, Lord led me into the field of a man called Boaz, a very generous man. Did you, did you say Boaz? <laughs> yes, he told me he was a relative of yours. Yes, he is my nephew, my cousin's son. He was so kind, he gave me a lot of bread and roasted grains too. Thank you God. 
he also allowed me to glean in his field till the end of the harvest season. That's wonderful. Mother, let's give some bread and grains to our neighbor, Lady Maka. Yes, she is a kind woman and she helped us so much. Until the end of harvest season, Ruth gleaned in the fields of Boaz. She gleaned during the day and at night she sewed clothes for the poor. Hmm. Let's go to bed, dear. You've been working all day. You go ahead, mother. I will finish this one and join you. But Ruth, look at you. You look so tired. Don't worry, mother. I will join you. Besides, tomorrow we are having the harvest feast. Boaz has invited me to. Really? You must wear your best clothes and don't forget to put on your ornaments too. <laughs> I will, mother. Now you go ahead and sleep. This is big. Ha ha ha. Huh? This is the biggest harvest we had had in years. God has blessed us. God has been generous to you because you have been generous to poor people. Isn't that? Isn't that Ruth? Ruth? Where? I can't see her. Look at the front. No. I can't. Her? Huh? It is her. She is so beautiful. Yes, I too didn't realize that. Poor woman though. She has a good heart. She works all day and then she sews clothes for the poor. Hmm. I must pay a visit to her mother tomorrow. And the next day, Boaz came to Naomi's house. Good heavens! Boaz, my nephew. Hello, aunt. It's so good to see you. I I I am ashamed to receive you in this poor shack. Oh, aunt. The condition of this house doesn't matter at all as long as you are happy. Happiness? That is not for me. I I lost everything. Everything except this daughter whom Don't worry. I'm here to talk about that daughter. Huh? What about Ruth? I uh, I wanted to talk to you first. Um I like to marry Ruth. But only if you have no objection. Lord, you have heard my prayer. What do you say? Oh, Boaz, we will be honored, but but what? You know, as per our custom, my brother's son is the next of the kin. Your brother's son? Who? Sikri? Hmm, yes. As long as Sikri gives away his right, you cannot marry Ruth. Hmm. I didn't think about that. I'm sorry, Boaz. I want you to marry Ruth. I really do. But Hmm. I have to think about this. Don't worry, aunt. I'll talk to Sikri and figure out a solution. The next day, Boaz gathered Sikri and 10 elders at the city gate. Everyone the widow of Elimelak is selling a piece of land Sikri you are the next of their kin you are entitled to buy it Do you want to buy it Yes I will buy the land from Elimelak's widow And as you buy the land you are bound to marry her daughter-in-law 
she is a more abite woman you must marry her and restore her late husband's name what are you joking are you saying that i should marry a gentile woman a foreigner yes that is the law of israel if you buy the land then you will have to marry her huh no no i don't want the land huh what are you giving up your right yes i am i don't want to marry a moabite woman then you must swear it sekwe you must renounce your right in our custom give your shoe to boaz all right here i hereby renounce my right to buy naomi's land and as a sign i'm giving my shoes to boaz we hereby proclaim boaz as the legitimate heir of naomi's property Boaz's plan worked and Sikri renounced his rights. After a few days, Boaz married Ruth. According to the law of Moses and Israel, I accept you, Ruth, as my wife. I shall be faithful to you until death. May the God of Israel look kindly upon you. May you be honored in Israel through your descendants. Ruth and Boaz had a son and they named him Obed. And Obed's son Jesse was the father of King David. That was a great story, father. Yes, father. We loved it. Hmm. Now shall I ask you a few questions from the story then? Yes, father. Why did Naomi and Ruth go back to Bethlehem? Naomi's husband had died a long time ago. and she lost her sons too Naomi and Ruth had no one else in Moab and that's why she left to her hometown Excellent George and was Ruth born in Bethlehem too No father Ruth was born in Moab and she was a Moabite Good Lucy now tell me why Naomi changed her name Naomi meant the happy one when Naomi lost her husband and her sons She decided to change her name to Mara, which meant the sorrowful one. Right again, George. Now tell me, how Boaz and Naomi were related? Boaz was Naomi's nephew. That was quick, Matthew. Good one. Hmm. Now tell me why Sikri refused to marry Ruth. Sikri did not want to marry a Gentile woman widow. And that's why he let go of his right for Naomi's land. That's right again. And for the last question, how was King David and Ruth related? Boaz and Ruth had a son named Obed, who was the grandfather of King David. That's correct, George. It's time for us to leave. Father, what story are you going to tell us tomorrow? Tomorrow. Hmm. Uh I'll tell you the story of Samuel tomorrow my child. Ah, the story of Samuel? Yes, the story of Samuel. We will meet again tomorrow. Goodbye children. Goodbye, Goodbye father. Oh, I hope father John come quickly. Yes, I want to hear the story of Samuel so much. Me too. Hey, look, he is coming. Hello, kids. Were you all waiting for me? Yes, father. We wanted to hear the story of Samuel so much. So we came here early. Hmm. That's good. Come, let's sit there. Do you remember what I told you about judges in the Bible? Yes, father. Judges were the liberators sent by God to free Israelites. Very good, George. And can you name any one judge from the Bible? 
Hmm. Samson was a judge, wasn't he? Yes. Samuel too was a judge. He was the last and the greatest of the judges who ruled Israel. In the history of Israel, only Moses excelled him in importance. Now listen carefully. A long time ago, a long time ago, there lived a man called Elkanah in town called Rama. He had two wives, Hannah and Penina. Hannah was Elkanah's favorite, but she had no children. Penina had children, and every opportunity she used to insult Hannah for being childless. Come on, it's getting late. We have to walk quickly. Penina, you look tired. So? I can carry the child for a while, if you would like. No, I will carry him myself. Come on, Penina. Shiloh is still a long way off. Let her carry the child for a while. No, I am not going to let this barren woman hold my child. Oh. Why are you being so cruel, Penina? Lord God, how long do I have to bear this shame? Help me, God. Let's eat and rest for a while here. We'll offer the sacrifice in the afternoon. Come on, let's make something to eat. <laughs> Where is Hannah? How would I know? Hannah, Hannah, why are you crying? Uh, what else can I do other than to cry? Even our God has abandoned me. Don't worry, it's all right. Don't you realize that I love you more than anything else in this world? I know, dear. Come now, the lunch is ready. Let's eat something. All right. While they were preparing the meat for sacrifice, one of the servants of the priest came to them. What is that? Who are you, sir? I am the servant of the priest. Mmm, this meat looks delicious. No, sir, stop. What are you doing? That meat is for the offering. You should give the offering to the priest first. You can offer whatever is left to the God. The priests are getting so corrupt here. Lord God, look humbly upon your handmaid. If you would lift my shame and give me a son, I shall dedicate him to your service. Who is that woman? Who are you? What are you doing here? My lord, my name is Hannah, wife of Elkanah. Why are you crying, dear? Please don't misunderstand me, lord. I was pouring out my soul before God. Hmm. Don't worry, Hannah. Go in peace. May God bless you. God heard Hannah's prayer and blessed her with a son, and she named him Samuel. Oh, my son, thank you, God. I will call you Samuel. Hannah had waited so long for this child, and she loved him so much, but she remembered the promise she made to God. Hannah was an honest woman, and when Samuel turned five, she took him to Shiloh. Mother? Yes, son. Where are we going? Mm. We are going to Shiloh, where the Ark of Covenant is. And why are we taking this ox? This is an offering to our God. It's getting dark. Walk quickly, Samuel. Coming, father. You, you. Don't you? Don't you remember me, Lord? I am the woman who cried and prayed for a child. Ah, I remember you. You look so happy now. Yes, yes, I am. God answered my prayer. Samuel, come here. Yes, mother. Lord, 
It was for this child that I prayed. I have made an oath to dedicate him to the service of our God. Hmm, dear, your faith is so deep and your sacrifice is great. May the Lord let his face shine upon you. May he reward you with other sons and daughters. Thank you, Father. Am I not going to see you again? Don't worry, my son. I will come to visit you often. At first, Samuel missed his mother a lot. But after a while, he was glad to be able to serve God in the sanctuary. Samuel? Yes, Master? Come with me. I will show you something. Son, that is the sanctuary lamp. It will be your core to keep that alight all the time. This lamp is so beautiful. Thank you, Master. Hmm. Like this lamp. May your faith shine like this always, my son. In the meanwhile, Hannah gave birth to more sons, and every year she made it a point to visit Samuel. Huh? Mother? 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 Ah, oh, Samuel, my son. Mother! How have you been, Samuel? I'm doing well, Mother. Master is so good to me. Hey, little brother, you have grown up. Here, take this, Samuel. I made this for you. Wow, this is so beautiful. Thanks, Mother. Hmm, you must keep your life as pure as this white dress, my son. I will, Mother. Master is teaching me a lot of new things and I'm really happy here. It is so good to see you, my son. May God bless you. One night, Samuel was sleeping when he heard a voice. Samuel... Samuel. Huh? Who was that? Master, Master. Huh? Hmm. What is it, Samuel? Master, I heard you calling me. Huh? I didn't call you. It must be a dream. Say your prayers and go back to sleep. Huh? I'm sure I heard someone calling my name. Samuel said his prayers and went back to sleep. But after a while, he heard the same sound again. Samuel. Samuel. Huh? Master? Master, Master, I heard you calling me again. No, Eli, I didn't call you. You must have dreamed again. Didn't you say your prayers? Yes, Master, I did. Don't worry, my son. Say your prayers again and get back to sleep. But Master, I'm sure. It's just a dream, my son. Go on now. Get back to sleep. All right, Master. But after a while, he heard the same voice for the third time. Samuel. Samuel. Huh? I did not just dream that. Master, Master. Huh? Did you hear the voice again? Yes, Master, I did. Hmm. Son, go back to sleep now. If you hear the voice again, then you should say, Speak, Lord, thy servant is listening. I will say that, Master. Samuel did not realize that it was the Lord who called him. After some time, God called his name again. Samuel. Samuel. Huh? Speak, Lord. Thy servant is listening. Samuel, I am going to punish Israel for her sins. I will carry out against Eli everything I have spoken. Because he has not corrected his sons, I will punish his house. <sighs> Are you awake, Master? Oh, Samuel, come here. My son, what message did Lord give you? Don't hide anything from me. Master, it's... he said... 
Tell me, my son, what did Lord tell you? God is going to punish your house, master. No offerings or sacrifices is going to save you. Ah, I knew this was coming. My sons, they are so wicked and cruel. I am sorry, master. Don't worry, my son. It was the voice of God. Let him do what he thinks good. From that day, Samuel was held in great esteem as the prophet of God. He accompanied Eli in all his course, but Eli's sons refused to follow the path of God. Master! Phineas, my son, what brings you here? Master, we are being attacked by the Philistines. Our soldiers were defeated at Aphek. Hmm, God is abandoning us. I believe that we lost because the Ark of God was not amidst us while we were fighting. What do you want to do now? Please, let us take the Ark to our war camp. No, this is like testing our God. What you should be doing is to plead for God's help. What? Mind your own business, kid. We adults will decide what to do. Huh? Why are you carrying the ark all the way to battlefield? Is it because you think our God's hand is short? How dare you? Who are you to question the priests? You idiot! Phineas, I think there is a point in what Samuel is saying. Are you supporting him, master? I'm saying that what Samuel is saying is true. You are doubting our God's power. Huh, you have become old. Anyway, I'm taking the ark, whether you are love or not. Phineas. Come, let's take the ark to the camp. Don't mind them. Are you going to take the ark without discerning his will? Get lost, you! Phineas, please don't. But Phineas didn't listen to Eli. They took the ark to the battlefield. Master, the temple is empty. You shouldn't have let them take the ark. What could I do? You saw them. They would not listen to me. It's been many days now. Did you get any news from them? No, and I'm scared. Master, Master! Who? Who is that? He is the soldier who was with Phineas. Oh, I hope he has come with some good news. Master! <sighs> what is it? Your sons! We lost everything, Master! What happened to my sons? Tell me, what happened? The Philistines captured the Ark and they, they killed your sons. No! Master, no! Hearing about his son's death, Eli too died that day. Philistines took the Ark to Asdod and set it down besides Dagon, their god. But the next day... What? Who broke the neck of our god Dagon? Who did this? Whoever did this must be punished. My lord, I think, I think the Ark is responsible. Hmm, that must be true. We kept the Ark in this room yesterday, and today we find our god with his neck broken. Hmm, it could be true. Take this ark to God. I don't want to suffer the wrath of the God of Israel. Yes, my lord. But wherever the Philistines took the ark of God, they were struck by severe plague. And finally, the Philistines decided to send the ark back to Israel. Hey, look. That's our ark of God. Are those Philistines bringing back the ark? I think so. I heard they were struck with plague and disasters wherever they took the Ark. Then that must be the reason why they are bringing it back. There comes the Ark! <laughs> God hasn't abandoned us. Come, let's see where they will stop. 
The people brought back the ark to the house of Abinabad. Years passed and the Philistines continued their cruelty towards Israelites. God has abandoned us. That's why the Philistines are getting so strong. We are paying two-thirds of what we make as taxes. How are we going to survive? And what about their soldiers? We have to hide ourselves whenever we see them. Hmm. Don't you realize this even now? God is punishing you for your infidelity. Why are you worshipping the idols? Don't you know that it's against God's law? We... We are sorry. Repent and return to God. Gather all people to Mizbah on the seventh day from now. Yes, Master. We will inform everyone. Many people came to Mount Mizbah to hear Samuel speak. But the Philistines too heard about the gathering. They knew it was a great opportunity to kill many Israelites. And they marched to attack them. By worshipping idols, you are committing a great sin. Today, you will spend the day in fast and prayer. Mister! Mister! What happened? Mister! The Philistine army is coming! Oh no! We are doomed! Calm down! Don't worry! God will protect us! God, once you saved our fathers from the hands of Pharaoh, now look kindly upon this people and save us from the hands of this arrogant army. God heard Samuel's prayers and he routed the army of Philistines. Oh no, the gods are coming against us. It is the God of Israelites! Run for your lives! Run! Run! They are gone? <laughs> they ran back! Thank you, Samuel. You saved our lives. Master, you are a true prophet. Thank you. I did not. Our mighty God saved us. For a long time, Samuel ruled Israel. As long as the people obeyed him, there was peace and jest in the land. But when he became old, the people of Israel resorted back idol worship. Did you see the army of Philistines? Yes, so strong and disciplined. Those Philistines are getting stronger every day. Huh. Don't you realize this? They have kings to lead them, and that's why they are so strong. Hmm, what you say is correct. We are weak because we don't have a king. There is only one way out. We need a new king. But where do you think we can find an apt person? Let's go ask the prophet Samuel. But will he let us? Huh? We must have a king at any rate. The man took the elders and went to talk to Samuel. Master, the Philistines will soon take over our land. Hmm. Don't you understand? No one but you are to be blamed for this. You had abandoned our God and His commandments. All this talk of God will only lead us to slavery. Yes, what we need is a king who can lead us. Master, see the Philistines and Amorites. They are conquering other lands because they have a king. But listen to me. You are not like other people. Our Lord God is your king. There he's starting again. Was it a king who liberated us from Egypt? Did we have a king to capture the promised land? Stop! Those 
those are just tales from the past. Then what about what happened at Mount Mizpah? Was it a king who saved you from the Philistine army? You saw that yourself, didn't you? If you are not willing to anoint a king, then we will be forced to resort to other ways. <laughs> All right, let me check the will of God. You can come back tomorrow and I will inform you. Huh? Come, let's leave. God, how am I going to control these people? They won't listen to me anymore. I'm getting old and Israel is getting weaker every day. Maybe there is some truth in what they are saying. Hmm. King and army, could it be possible that God is speaking through his people? No, isn't God the king of Israel? Lord, please show us the way. The next morning, when people gathered outside temple gates to listen to Samuel, he made an announcement. Israel, listen, it is God who speaks. I shall anoint a king for you. But remember this, he shall make the mighty men among you as his soldiers and servants, and your daughters will be his wives and maids. He will take over your land. He will reduce you to slavery. There will be no point in seeking help from God after this. What do you say? We don't worry about that, but today we want a king. Yes, what we need is a king. All right then. You shall have a king within 30 days from today. Gather all the Israelites at Mizpah on that day. The story of Samuel doesn't end here. He played a crucial role in the history of Israel. So, did you like the story? Wow! Samuel's story is so inspiring. Yes, George. He wept with his people in their disasters. He prayed for them and offered sacrifices on their behalf. He taught them the law of God faithfully. Samuel was a great prophet. Now, shall I ask you a few questions from the story I told you? Yes, Father. What was the name of Samuel's mother? Hmm. Her name was Hannah. Right, Matthew. And Lucy, can you tell me what promise did Hannah make to God before Samuel's birth? She made a promise that if she had a son, then she will dedicate him to the service of the Lord. Very good, Lucy. Hmm. Now tell me, what were the two crucial moments in the life of Samuel? I can tell you the first one. Yes, George, tell me. When the Philistines defeated Israel and took the ark, it was Samuel who gave hope and courage to his people. The people of Israel listened to him and turned to God. That's correct, George. And who can tell me the second one? Do you know the second one? Hmm, we don't know the answer, Father. Oh, right. I haven't told you that story yet. All right. When people of Israel cried for a king, it was Samuel who appointed a king. And that was the second most important moment in Samuel's life. A king? But wasn't the people of Israel supposed to follow only God? That's true. Samuel was torn between the demands of Israelites for a king and his own faith in God. Even when he appointed a king, he did not fail insist on the sovereignty of God and his authority over people. Now I want you all to memorize this verse that I'm going to tell you. These were the words that Samuel said when God spoke to him. Repeat this with me. Speak, Lord. Thy servant is listening. Speak, Lord. Thy servant is listening. 
That's very good. It's time for me to leave. We'll meet again tomorrow. Father, which story are you going to tell us tomorrow? Hmm. I'll tell you the story of the first king of Israel, the story of King Saul. Wow, the story of King Saul. Thank you, father. Goodbye, children. Goodbye, Goodbye father. father.